Vamos a tocar soneros, toquemos de corazón Y en este bonito día vamos a hacer un rumbo Y si del alma brota letra, armonía y sazón Son estos los ingredientes para componer un son Oye, ya que la fiesta está buena, se juntaron los soneros Vamos a tocar un son que lo escuche el mundo entero, que no me falle la clave. Y antes que rompa un tumba, que pongo que se destaque, que no me quedo callado. Hello, and thank you so much for being part of this interview. Um, Hi, thank you for having me. Would you mind immediately starting with the introduction of yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Gregor Kirhofer, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of a, a small indie development studio based here in Salzburg, Austria. Cool. Tell us everything about the studio like everything from the history, like how it got started, how you, how you found your um, team members and where you are now. Sure. Um, so it basically all began at the end of uh, our bachelor's degree here at the University of Applied Sciences in Salzburg, um, where me and a friend were basically thinking of whether or not to, to start a master's degree here and basically ended up with um, the resolution that, well, if we're going to study for another two years, then we might as well put together a, a decent team and try to develop something while we study that might enable us to go commercial afterwards and uh, found the studio and maybe get our foot into the industry. So that's basically what we did. Um, we put together, a, we found like a couple of people that were interested and eager to uh, try something uh, tr equally crazy and try this, uh, and just basically plunge into the cold, into cold water. Um, and before we even finished our studies, we were basically already, we basically already had founded our studio and, uh, had almost basically completed the development of our first game, uh, which was Chapeau, a chaotic four-player party game where you would compete against your friends in a variety of different game modes while playing a hat and uh, basically <laughs> jumping from one person to the next in order to score points. Um, now, that was our first game, and uh, we self-published it uh, both on Nintendo Switch and Steam, which is something we were quite proud of uh, to say as our first release since Nintendo Switch was always like a big dream for us, uh, being the generation that kind of grew up with Nintendo 64s uh, or even earlier, uh, and playing all these party games in our youth, you know, um, being able to release a game on Nintendo Switch is was a big milestone. Um, but uh, we obviously also soon realized that uh, being on Nintendo Switch or even just releasing the game on Steam is not to be all end all, and we were pretty quickly uh, set back into reality um, because uh, obviously, since it was our first game, we also did one or two things uh, wrong that could have gone a little bit better. Um, but also a big problem that we had during the release from, of our first game was that we released this, a local multiplayer party game right in the midst of the first uh, COVID-19 wave. Mm. which is less than ideal. Mm. Um, I mean, the next very obvious question is, um, and I think I can already see a little bit f spoilers and hints, yes, <laughs> all around the screen. And I mean, w also behind me, you might see um, a tiny little alpaca or a llama. I don't know. Tell us everything. What is with those alpacas all around you? 
Well, you see, um, about a year ago, we really needed to take a break from our previous project. And so we decided to just do a week of prototyping and just do something really crazy, like the most crazy thing we can think of. And it just happened to be that we thought of alpacas playing football with each other. Uh, at first we thought it's just a silly, stupid idea, but um, we were actually able to uh, show it to some uh, student colleagues during uh, like a little uh, internal exhibition here at the university. And uh, for some reason, people stayed up uh, stayed way past closing time and kept playing the game. So we were thinking, you know, maybe maybe there is something there. Um, so we kept exploring it. And uh, funnily enough, about one and a half months ago, we released a game called Alpaca Ball All-Stars, which is literally alpacas playing football against each other. <laughs> It's a really crazy concept, but uh, one of the key things that we were looking out uh, when we were designing the whole thing was to make it as silly and stupid as possible. So it's filled with uh, ridiculous ragdoll physics that will launch your alpaca through the air in, in, in the middle of the game um, for no apparent reason other than it just does. Um, but so far, it really seems to uh, connect well with a lot of players. And um, we were actually uh, fortunate enough that we found uh, two publishers for this game that are now helping us get the game into a lot of people's hands. Yeah, congrats. I mean, this is such a good achievement. And I mean, the concept, this is really, for me, <laughs> this is this shut up and take my money concept. <laughs> this is really... <laughs> Glad to hear. <laughs> yeah, really, really good. Yeah. And I mean, the next very obvious question, what is next? And um, then like, let's, let's, let me frame this question in a little bit of a bigger context. Sure. Um, yeah. Of course, what, what are the next steps of what you can already tell us about, but also hmm. where's the big vision? What is the big picture of your studio or, or the next developments? All right. That, that, that's a good question. That's also a big question. Now, one of the, the, the leading motivations we had uh, when founding our studio was the problem that if we would not have founded a studio, we would have probably had to move to some other country um, because the amount of jobs in this kind of sector are very limited. Um, so now ultimately what like our very, very long-term plan is not only to be making video games that are hopefully still interesting, funny, and quirky in the future, um, but also to be able to like, help new and upcoming, uh, especially like students that uh, created like amazing uh, graduation projects that often then just get forgotten about because it's, it's really not that straightforward. Um, especially in Austria, to just uh, go independent and, and, and open a studio. It's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, things in the way often. And so m many people, rather to, to, to go and risk it, they, they just decide, you know, I might as well just find myself a, a good job, a good paying job somewhere else. So long term, that's one of our motivations to to just be able to kind of like support the whole kind of community, the ecosystem in Austria, and maybe uh, do our little part to to improving the whole uh, gaming industry here. But um, that's obviously a big goal, and it's gonna require quite a lot of funds. And so it's nothing we will be able to do immediately, but hopefully sometime in the future. Now, for what's next. Um, well, we're not completely done with Alpaca Ball yet. Um, there is still a few updates uh, to the game that have already been planned that are coming. Also, it's not out everywhere yet. Um, for example, uh, it's still going to be releasing in uh, Korea. And also, a physical edition is still going to come to, to Japan and uh, sometime in the 
early next year, we will also uh, see the release of a PlayStation and Xbox version, thanks to our publisher. Uh, but apart from that, we are now heavily prototyping again, trying out various different concepts that have been piling up uh, in our drawers and uh, whiteboards. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. It's just <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, so, so that's one of the main things we're doing now. Um, we're also exploring a, a couple of other uh, opportunities, but those uh, there's not much to share about that yet. So we'll just have to see. So right now, very interesting time because it's not 100% set um, what the next big project is, but we'll sure be starting with that soon. Cool. Yeah, I mean, good, good, good luck with that. And I think um, we are really curious to see what's next and I'm really excited to see the next project. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for the next question, I think you already tackled it a little bit. Um, which would be what are your advices for young developers or mm -hmm. students or people trying to get into the games industry? Yeah. Um, so in my opinion, the, the single most important thing when you are trying to tackle any bigger project, uh, maybe video games or, or whatever else really, is uh, if you can't do it by yourself, find the best possible team that you can. And with that, I don't mean necessarily um, uh, professionally, uh, like not necessarily skill-wise, but um, just people you can become really, really good friends with. Because uh, you, you can have good times and bad times, and it's, it's going to be difficult to start a company. And uh, you can live off very little money if needed, but what you cannot really uh, solve um, or, or prevent is, is bad team dynamic. And the team behind, in our case, the game, is 95% uh, of, of the end result, in my opinion. So um, if you're planning on doing anything in that direction, make sure you have the right people on your side. This is, yeah, this is so important. Thanks so much for pointing this out. This is um, key, absolutely. Um, the last question might be a challenging one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, but I, I don't know. Um, but the year 2020 was especially a, a unique year um, mm. and came with many challenges. How did you and your team cope with those challenges? Mm, is there anything you learned out of, out of that? And um, is there already something you're looking forward to when things are a little bit more normal again? Um, well... I mean, as, as a fully quote unquote digitalized uh, studio, let's say, um, things like home office don't hit us as hard as some other industries, but we still realize that uh, home, home office is quite a different story. And we noticed that especially for us, and especially for the games that we were making, uh, them being mostly local uh, multiplayer games, um, it changed the way we had to tackle um, our daily processes quite uh, a lot. Now, like I said, it, it could have been worse, but definitely that's also something I'll be looking forward to once things uh, normalize again. Just uh, being able to, to sit in, in, in one office in one room with the entire team and be able to just uh, bounce ideas back and forth whenever they come to your mind. Um, apart from that, obviously we, we, we released two games and <laughs> interestingly enough, the first one was released basically during the first wave and the second one was released shortly prior to the, to the second wave really. Um, so it's definitely also something that we felt when it comes, when it comes to how the, the games performed. Um, but yeah, there's, there's only so much you can do against, um, uh, to prevent it and uh, I guess you just always have to look forward and, and, and find uh, workarounds to deal with the situation at hand. Thank you so much for sharing that and thank you so much for this interview. I'm looking forward um, to see what you're up to next and yeah, thanks so much again. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> see you, bye.